How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to show you how to fix an LED light bar. Now this can be a module inside a car where inside there's lots of individual LEDs just like this or it can be inside one of these LED lamps that have a lot of tiny little lamps inside or it can be like a light fixture or a handheld thing. Anything that has an array of LEDs, I'm going to show you how to fix something like that. I'm going down to the component level to fix things so you need some basic level of equipment in order to do this kind of repair. For example, you need a multimeter and it doesn't have to be an expensive one. Sometimes they sell things like $10 and those would work just fine. You also need a soldering iron and possibly the component that you need to put in in order to fix everything. Now I'm going to pretend no one knows about anything electronic so I'm going to put everything in very simple terms. Here's the lamp module I'm fixing. I've loosened the PC board from this module already so I'm going to pull them out like this. Each one has its own lens and there's eight of them down here and seven of them down here. So when you turn all these on, it'll seem like one big lamp. Here's the lamp module itself and the 12 volt goes in here. I've actually finished repairing this and I just shoved in this 10 ohm resistor in here. So this is not part of the module. This is what I did in order to jump across four of these lights so that it would actually work still. Now there are 15 total LEDs in this module and in your module it may have a different kind but then they're always going to string them together. First three row has four LEDs like this and then the third row has three LEDs with a resistor over here. I'll explain why that is later. And at the end there's a whole bunch of resistors here. Let me just explain how these things fail. One of the major cases of failure is one of the LEDs being broken and it breaks so that it's short open, okay? So what happens is, let's say this one broke, okay? It goes like that, but then you're still supplying power to the whole thing. These guys would want the same kind of current going through, so all of a sudden, these three that are wired in parallel, instead of getting the proper current, these guys, each of them are getting about 33 more percent current going through them. Therefore, once it gets more current going through, it's kind of being overdriven and so it's getting stressed more. So eventually one of them breaks and the rest gets a little bit more juice flowing through them because this is in one long chain. And these guys eventually will fail um, much faster because of the extra current going through them. And maybe after a while, another one goes off and all of a sudden these are driven twice as hard and so these would go out pretty soon after um, this guy goes out. In order to debug this, all you have to do is take the module out, put a 9 volt battery across, and then measure across each LED and see how much voltage there is across them. If there's a really large voltage, it means it's shorted open. If you measure across these guys, it might be like 1 volt or something. 1 volt across this. 1 volt across this. And then when you go to measure the, the set that is broken, it's gonna show maybe like five volts or something. So it'll let you know that it, that is shorted open. So let's say you got a bunch of LEDs that are broken and so maybe you want to source some parts. That might be difficult because you have to find the exact part to put back in. And if you don't know much about electronics, that might be a little hard. So what you can do is just kind of short across them. You don't want to use just a piece of wire because that's going to cause the rest of them to be overdriven too hard. What you can do is replace those LEDs with a resistor just so that you can jump across them but still supply the same amount of current. So sort of like what they did over here. So instead of having four LEDs over here, they had three. But then they don't want to overdrive these so then they just put another resistor here so some of the current will flow through this resistor. You see there's four resistors here and you may wonder how come they don't just combine them to make one resistor because there will be less parts. The thing is these resistors has a certain wattage and driving all these LEDs takes a lot of current. They have multiple resistors here in order to meet the wattage requirement so it kind of disperses the heat a little bit better. Let me cover diodes really briefly because it will help you understand what's going on here. You have a diode here, but it's not the LED kind. It doesn't emit light. They may have put this in just so that when you reverse the voltage, it won't completely sh shoot out in case the LEDs are broken short. So if these LEDs are broken and somehow they short together instead, you it, and if you reverse this whole thing, you might get overcurrent and blow some fuses in your car. Regular diodes and the LED diodes operate roughly in the same way. When you put a current into them, they like to go to a certain voltage very quickly. 
This is a typical diode curve. I'm not going to explain every little thing, but the current is here, the voltage is here. You can see that if you increase the in current a tiny little bit, just like a little bit right here, it tends to want to go to a certain voltage. So this voltage is whatever the voltage is for these LEDs. And by the way, different LEDs have different voltages. So different color ones have different inherent voltage they like to be at. So you put in a little bit current and all of a sudden, boom, it's right at, I don't know, like two volts or something. And even if you put in, you know, twice as much current, it's not going to change in voltage all that much, although it will reduce the life of your uh, LED. So in order to test these LEDs, it's best to put a battery across them, but then have a current limiting resistors. Because we're testing this module, you don't really need to add current limiting resistors because it's built in already. You just put a battery right across the whole thing. You measure the voltage to see which one is shorted open, and then you can see this array module here, this sub array is broken. Let's go through a thought experiment. You go through this whole array and you supply about 20 milliamps, which is kind of pretty low. LEDs, you generally drive it, you know, 20 to 100 milliamp or more depending on the type. But I would normally start with 20 milliamps for each LED. I see the four of them here, so I'm gonna put like 80 through. Let's say this is fixed already and we put 20 milliamps through. So very quickly, across these LEDs, it's gonna come over here and it's gonna de develop a voltage uh, very close to its inherent voltage. Let's say two volts, okay? As soon as you put some sort of current, these guys will kind of lock at two volts, okay? Two volt, two volt, two volt, two volt. So basically, no matter what current you put through there, these guys are gonna stick around the same voltage. So you can go two, 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 two. Okay, so this is about 10. So there's gonna be two left over over here. Knowing that this is going to be about two volts and it's always gonna stick around no matter if you drive it with more current or less current, that means you can set the current of this whole chain with the resistor values you put here. So let's say this is two volts, right? V equals IR, which is basic electronic equation. Voltage is equal to current times the resistance. We have a voltage of two across it. We have a current of 80 milliamps. We wanna solve for resistance so that we can put the correct resistor there so that 80 milliamps will flow through it. That means we need an R of 25 ohms. Now the actual resistance here is slightly different because of the different voltage drops because I just made the math a little simpler. But you get the point. These are current setting resistors. And so if you have an array of these LEDs in the lamp module or a car lamp module, you can actually jump across it, but you cannot short it. You need to put a resistor there of the correct value. In this case, I put about a 10 ohm resistor and the voltage that developed across it is a little bit smaller than the voltage that developed across these diodes, which means I'm driving it a slightly harder, but it's okay. You can be, you know, five to 10% off and it will still work. And so the end effect of all this is you're gonna have a set of LEDs that would be burnt out, but at least the rest of them will still remain on. It's not ideal because some of your LEDs will be turned off and it's kind of annoying if you worry about the aesthetics of it because if you're gonna put it in your car, you may not wanna do this, but maybe if you have a lamp module where you're not actually looking at the LEDs, this might be okay because it's just gonna give you a slightly reduced brightness. So this is my soldering table. This is where I do a lot of electronics repair here. You can see I have a multimeter here. I have a bench power supply, fume extractor here that's sort of jerry-rigged with a hanger. I have a fan that would blow all the fumes from soldering out the window. And you see I have a microscope here. This is just a cheapy brand that I bought. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. Um, I have a Metcal soldering iron, which I've used a lot of soldering irons over the years and Metcals are the best because they use this radio frequency thing over here, okay? They use this radio frequency thing and all the energy goes at the tip. You see, I got two of them. They're pretty expensive, but I bought them for $60. They retail for like 700 or more because it says, oh, for repair. So I got like the schematics and everything and I was about to repair them. But when I got them in the mail, I just plugged it in, they all worked. So I got lucky in that way. Anyway, here are the LED modules here and I've connected to the 12 volt power supply. And you see, if I turn up the current over here, it goes roughly to 180 milliamps. And you can see here only 11 of them are lit up because I had to jumper across. These LEDs are completely shot. And the important thing to know here is I can increase the current on this power supply 
and it's not going to increase the current really. It just wants 180 milliamps right now. So here I put it back in the module. You see some of them aren't lit up. It's not ideal, but hey, at least it lights up a little bit. So I actually did try to find one of these modules and I took, you know, maybe half an hour, one hour trying to look for one of these and I couldn't find it. That's why I'm repairing this one because having it lit at least three quarter of the way is better than none. So I hope this gives you your LED lamp module a little bit more life. Don't forget to give me a like over here. Comment down below. Let me know if this helps you and subscribe. Thanks for watching.